This next scene is a little bit tricky. If my sled falls in this hole and pulls me with the ropes in it, I might die. So, for the sake of it, I'm gonna film it and come back here. But I have to be super careful here. Holy shit! Holy shit! I meet people, I meet Yakut, I meet Chakshi, I meet Irene, I meet Koryak, I meet life. Russians often say, that shame, what for? What is the reason why I want to do this, uh, pulling a sled and cycling around the world? I often respond so I can meet you. After being the sixth person to ever finish the 1,000 mile Alaska and I did a sport on foot, Dimitri's next goal is to travel around the world using only human powered transportation. He needs to hit two antipods on each side of the planet, one in Mongolia and the other in Chile, to complete a full circumnavigation of the planet. His expedition begins by crossing the Bering Strait from Alaska to Russia. With his expedition partner at the time, Carl Bushby, they venture into the only roadless section of the planet, what Dimitri calls the missing link. However, within days of crossing the Russian border, his expedition is halted as Russian police arrest him under suspicion he is a U.S. spy. Literally, the question was, are you a spy? We went through a trial, we were detained. They brought a team of uh, investigators from Moscow that came from uh, the FSB. We had to um, apologize officially to the Russian government on TV and to Putin himself. We had to say specifically, I am not a spy. After a long trial and a 54-day detainment, he realizes this is a story worth recording, so obtains a video camera to document this remarkable journey. It's um, April 15, and I'm going to start the next leg of this uh, expedition from Ekvekina to uh, Welkal to Anadi to um, Kaminskoy events and finally Omsukshan that will lead me to Western Russia. experience with losing anything by fire. Many cities were lost by fire. My loss is a bit more modest but it is quite dramatic for my little expedition. And you know I lost my tent for a stupid reason. I put my my stove not right in the middle. I didn't prep it very well, didn't pay attention to it and next thing I know a uh, big flame came out and, and I tried to stop it but there's nothing I could do. It went straight up and my, fire, my tank caught on fire, but it could have been a lot worse. Also lucky that I'm only three days away from an idea, and not right smack in the middle of nowhere. I saw, oh, there's right behind me a beautiful white bird. But it's a beautiful little white bird. I started to see those the last two days. Three! Oh, I gotta film that. Uh, let me try, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what to explain? I'm uh, coming across in, uh, in, a, in a labyrinth of rivers coming down and I'm aiming at the one on the right, uh, the Muskyu River. What could really well happen is I fall out down to my hips, pull on to my sled and get back on. And I also have a, an axe that I'm going to keep handy to be able to use in case if I need to pull myself out. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Circumnavigation of the planet therefore requires crossing oceans. Unless you dare to venture into the missing link. Most of the land on Earth can be connected by roads. However, a short but remote gap remains between Alaska and Russia. Crossing the Bering Strait and over 5,000 kilometers of snow and ice brought Dimitri across the missing link to the beginning of the continuous road. The problem is that he's in my way. I don't want to fuck with him. Okay, I better turn that off. I've been pulling my sled through this stuff 
so I had to backtrack and then I'm gonna follow it this way. Now you can see why those little streamer problem Fatso gets get stuck. That's what's happened. And every time I gotta get him out of trouble. Because Mr. can get himself out of trouble. And yes, I'm talking to my sled. Yes! Who else I'm gonna talk to? Wilson? Fatso! And there's something else I'm dealing with now. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are in. It's a season. And not only that, but it's, it's a first for me. Being able to uh, ski with a mosquito, mosquito net. I've never done that before. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is a fox retrieving a vodka bottle from the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spasiva. Это много. Это нету. Понимаешь? Спасибо. Пока. До свидания. My expedition, a big part of it, is uh, the nature that I encounter and the people that I meet, the food that I eat, the, the cultures, the the language, the religion, the. And that's what I'm trying to encounter uh, and to experience as I go. So yes, it is a big part of it. The expedition is, is sharing what I learned from other human beings on this planet. To give you at least a visual of this Lego land, uh, Ruben Abramovic called it the mini Anchorage. I'd like to call it also uh, mini Hong Kong, but really Lego land. Fireworks have been uh, an idea. I left a few of hours ago. Here's my tent and a fireworks in the background. How about that? Why do I this? Why not? Why should I just be walking or just cycling through the world? No, hell no. I, I gotta dance too. It's part of life. Storms, foreboding terrain, difficult navigation, and threatening wildlife not an easy existence. Despite the goal of connecting cultures, there may be no human contact for weeks. I'm really thinking of stopping this, this old uh, Daniel's plan of going around the world. Uh, there's a lot of things I like to do in my life. And spending years in, in a tent like this, like a homeless, is not necessarily one of them. I need to, uh, I need to, I may need to stop this, this whole thing. Now the point is to get out of here, it's not going to be an easy thing. I have one checkpoint here, which is this brigade, whenever I can find it, and then after that is nothing for 100k. Much of the time he is surviving. This survival eliciting emotional highs and lows. I think I might be it this time, really. Uh, the only thing that keeps me going right now is pride. Pride of failure, pride of failure of what people think, of what, but I, I don't really enjoy it that much right now. I think I'm, I'm down. Yeah, I think I'm down. Overcoming the ability to film in these moments, the camera is as much his only friend as a burden too heavy to lift. Terrible filming, Rick. I apologize, but I'm not in the mood to film very much, I would say. So, yes, yeah, it's better filming. Um, yeah, so I'm at the brigade, but there's no brigade. I'm at the brigade location. There's reindeer sheets everywhere and piss and everything else, but there's no reindeer. And there's no, more important than that, there's no. No guards, nobody. So uh, this is where I was supposed to be supplying my food. <sighs> Many of the cultures Dimitri meets in Siberia are nomadic or semi-nomadic. Reindeer brigades, bear hunters, geese hunters, fishermen, all trying to eke out an existence in the Siberian tundra. Sometimes it's interesting, like between Russia and Alaska, they're like cousins. They, they you know, cross the, the Bering Strait. The Kodiak. A uh, reindeer herder would love to see what the Yakut herder does 200 miles away, how they, they, they behave with their reindeer, how they behave with their herding practices. And it's a great way to meet people, to see the culture. Somebody invite me in their place. I have a very hard time to say no when people invite me. Actually. 
if they invite me, it's that they want to introduce me to their life and, uh, and as part of this uh, sharing, this part of this adventure. Crossing a frozen river, it's always a, a not sensation. You always wonder if it's going to be a story. So finally, after five years, after five years, finally getting out of Chikotka into Kamchatka. It feels very, very good. The only problem, no tent. We are tentless in Kamchatka. The tents flew away like uh, tumbleweed, like tumbleweed in Western California. They flew away. We could never get them back. Two more nights, maybe, to get to Slautnaye and towards Kamenskoye, Evans, Magadan, Omsukshan, West Africa. That's it. There are small townships sparsely located throughout eastern Russia, offering Dmitry the opportunity to restock supplies and update his website. After a week of wonderful experience here in Slavnaye, taking off for Kaminsky and Kamchatka, my next stop. Yeah, that's a new look. It's easier in the tundra. Thanks to Anya, thank you. Traveling with my three um, roaming dogs, my three uh, hobo dogs for two days, and testing experience. Uh, they have walked with me for about 10k now. There's no idea how long they're gonna walk. Right now they're with me. So, I hope you can hear me. Come here, come here. Three, it is here. So here are my, uh, me and my three dogs. We've been traveling for three days, 45 kilometers. I have no idea how long uh, they're gonna be with me. I may have picked them up from the Yakut guys who were fishing five kilometers out of uh, Slautna, yes. And uh, they have never left. Uh, and they wait for me, and they get very excited every time we start again. So anyway, so this is uh, where I am, on my way to Oakland and Kaminsko here. Yeah. On the Pensina River all day today, zigzag doing curves and so on. With my you can see my three friendly friends. So yeah, this is a beautiful sight. Uh, I'm loving it. Of course, I'm worried about how hungry they're getting and how nasty they're gonna be when they're really, really super hungry because I, I have food for one dog, not for three dogs. And then uh, also, uh, the other thing I'm worried about is wolves. Uh, they may attract wolves. But on the inside, they will warn me if anything comes along like a bear or anything like this. They're fun. They go ahead, check things out, come back, I think they have done this trail before because they, they're really following the face the hard trail. And they come back and as soon as I stop they come back. The big guy here get excited every time we start again. He jump, jump, jump and then we move on. Snowmobile. First time since 5k after this lot now yeah. Marusia. Nakamshanka. This, this journey allows me to see the world, to see life, to, to meet people, to see it with my own eyes. And it's, it's beautiful. Uh, here's the type of fishing that we do. And we catch, we will, we catch the return. Sometimes they catch bigger ones, the shuka, and sometimes they catch uh, koryoshka in different months. But right now, this is what's in fashion this month, the, the return. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? That's what I thought. Walk on, buddy. Just walk on. Douglas, I'm going crazy. Completely crazy. Yeah? Oh, problem, problem. Yeah. Ivan 
and Igor over here getting ready to go hunting for geese. And there are two dogs that I'm gonna try really hard not to take with me. Quite like this place. We share food, we enjoy life, talk a lot about life in a brigade, what life used to be like in Russia. Wearing my dry suit, I'm ready to go to the down the river and down the sea and move on to Paris as quickly as possible. It took me a long time to get ready here, but should be good. On to the swimming section of this Olympic event. I'm uh, moving down the river. It's not swimming too bad, it's just up to my knee, so it's not bad, except my feet. I'm always kind of cold in this dry suit, it's not a perfect dry suit. So this is where it gets ugly if you're going down the river. This is a tough section. This is really a tough section. I'm coming hopefully towards the end. I just passed the 50 kilometer pass limit. Following this coastline, I will show you a little bit after. I wish I could go on the ice, but there's big gaps everywhere, so it may end up being more work and I may end up losing my sled in a, in a 8 to 10 feet gap. So in the meantime, I'm launching the coast. Uh, my biggest challenge is because my sled is pretty heavy right now, as usual, is to make sure that I don't tip it. That's the biggest issue, so keeping control of the sled as much as I can. So you, I'm gonna make a little section here, you can see me proceed. I have two or three big rivers to cross still, and I'm gonna be concerned about it, but we'll see, we'll deal with it at a time. It's, it's kind of nice to hear the um, the seagulls and a few bears, a few prints here and there. And a pretty big guy. Can you see this? Another thing I'm eating right now, which is usually not my cup of tea, is pure fat. Pure, uh, pure. Only the Italians and Russians, from what I know, eat this stuff. Usually, this is not the kind of thing I would eat <laughs> for all kind of reason. But here, my body craves it. Hopefully, three to five days stop and we're done. We'll see. It all depends. I have no idea what the last few miles are like. How open the rivers are, how much more ice there is along the coast. Every kilometer is a surprise. Touch wood, but I'm most likely going to be able to make it all the way into Perrin. Very glad to make it into a town. Finishing on the ice. It's been a good year. It's been a challenging year. Uh, tech took a beating on me, but uh, managed it through. So here yeah, I am going to enjoy one of those the other delicacies I've been given. Grushka. So this is how you eat it. You what is especially tasty in it is the eggs. Kind of strange way of eating a fish, but sorry on the last recording, kind of fuck it up, cut my head off for the Kurushka delicacy uh, demonstration. I got no left, so I can't do it again. God, this is taking the beating on me. But uh, tomorrow I would do something with some other fish. I got places to go, people to see. I got, I got, I gotta go. Oh, shit. That would be a dumb way of finishing the expedition. With a rock on my head from the cliff. This is it. Most likely my last night on the trail. Um, about 10k from uh, Bahrain. I'm gonna try to pull it through tonight. While the ice is filmed. Snow is filmed. Whatever is left. It's not that much. So yes. Um, it's been good. So let's put it. Let's pull this one through. An no nighter maybe. We'll see. We are we're there. Can feel it. Burning, 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 burning. 
Man, that thing is moving fast. Instead of focusing on chasing a little mouse for the TV, I should focus on getting down to Paddling. I should be there on 3 or 4 in the morning, whatever. Whenever we get there. Maybe a lot less, maybe 2 or 3, I don't know. I'm in Paren, my 18th day. I've been able to potentially negotiate my way right out of Yotsubo with the very first boat leaving. It's been good. It's been an interesting time here. I've been missing folks back home. My father had a major surgery uh, about two weeks ago and uh, my girlfriend, of course, uh, back in Kazan and, and my friends in Seattle and my sister and all the friends. There's a word in Russian, Puditezhvinik, and I quite like it. Um, Puditezhvinik is, is not a tourist, it's a traveler. And there's a big difference in Russian. This is not like a place where you actually can get on a, hop on a plane every two hours and get somewhere else and find your taxi to the hotel and your meal right away and everything else. No, this is, this is hard. This is not an easy place to get to, get out, and, and to live through. So the Russians understand very well that notion and, and therefore have a term for it, Puditezhvinik, and they, they realize that very quickly and say, Tibia Puditezhvinik, no da, no da. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> like I'm crossing an ocean. I could use a tripod and do some filming of myself pulling a sled, but you get the picture. It's me moving, pulling my sled in the middle of the ocean. All right, get me out now. Um, it's not getting any easier. We are 12.5 GPS kilometer from Gizhiga, and I'm still tracking this trail. Try to find it in here. You can see a few white lines going there, so the game is on. And by the way, I haven't seen anyone in 10 days. I'm taking a shortcut that the tractor didn't take. The GPS pointed this way, the tractor went all along the shore. It's always very risky. I'm taking advantage that it is a colder day, so thicker ice, and I'm lighter than a tractor somewhere. If the tractor didn't come through here, there must be a reason, right? And that's Giziga. It all paid off. I saved about 40 kilometers by taking this shortcut. So, now I'm starting to decide to want to film that I'm in a pretty gnarly section, a difficult section because my sled, now known as the Umstruction uh, uh, Express, here I'm contrived to follow the tractor trail where my sled gets sideways every five, six meters. The nature here is not forgiving if you're not careful. I'm gonna use no skis, no poles, just ride the sled. Now, this could be very serious here. Oh, oh they shit me!
Whew. This is the downhill we just took. It's quite a selfish adventure, I would say, but although I do like to share what I do on the website and blog and video and photos, but it's, uh, it's discovering this planet through the route that I choose at my own pace. And really, I mean, sometimes you push hard, sometimes you go easy. Uh, it's just discovering this planet and it's, it's fascinating. Let's talk about pain. Yes, pains. Sex is boring, sex is boring. Pain is great, pain is great. I want to cut my fingers off. I want to cut my fingers off one by one, one by one. Anyway. Check this weather. It's uh, March 30th. I just left the van today. Light snow, beautiful sun. It's beautiful and I'm taking a shortcut. I think I'm gonna enjoy every day. It's, it's gorgeous. It should be here. You, 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 and you sitting in the corner over there. You should all be there. This is my second day on snowshoe. Different muscles being walked on, so the legs are hurting a little bit differently, and the back, so got to use the brace a little bit, but it will get better. I just saw the snowmobile going, so I know this is the only traffic I will see. They're gone this way, and look, there's already no more trail. They're gone about an hour and a half ago, and the wind has already covered the trail with snow, fresh snow. This is a challenge. This is my 31st day, April 6th, and this is officially my piss off day. I've been following, as you know, some trails, snowmobile trails since events on and off. Uh, about five kilometers away, there was a fork, and that I've been going on the wrong trail. Been following apparently some fishermen, and that went down the coast. So now I have to go back four kilometer uphill and you saw me going uphill it's not a pleasure dome so I gotta get I gotta go back my spirits are not too high right now I'm trying to lift it but I know I'll be better as soon as I'm back where I'm supposed to be on the trail up there it's not I don't like walking it's just I don't like walking up here with a sled <laughs> I'm trying to get back to, this, to the GPS trail, but something happened. Om Shen and I took a dive. I came along this cliff and I, I thought it was smooth behind, but it was a pretty deep cliff. And uh, skis are fine. Om um, Shen Express bent right here on both sides. We will crack below, but on the other side, but uh, yeah. We're all good. And we're back on the snow on the GPS trail, which I will uh, want to keep <laughs> on it, I hope. I'll listen to myself. Why fail now? Right? So here I am uh, taking uh, a day break in, uh, in Tavatum, Tavatum Hot Springs. And I'm here alone with the caretaker and his son. And we are uh, enjoying this beautiful large pool, the largest pool I've been in a hot spring. Very salty water, it's great. It's healing my wounds in my fingers. It's a great place, it's a magical place. I'm really glad I'm able to stop here one day. It's a great stop. Thank you, Jenya, thank you. Hoping to do 30K between Tavatum, the hot springs, and Shirakaya, the other hot springs. Beautiful section of the of the missing link. Here I am in Chiro, the, the hunting outpost, the bear, bear hunting outpost, where people are getting ready. Uh, we just passed three days of bad weather. Living in 
in Shiroka bear hunting outpost on my way to Galina Iokucha. Okay, so you can see here we're going up a, a stream, a frozen stream. You can see the ice all around. And I'm gonna try to progress up this way. See what's next. One more time. Just gravity is holding it. I think I have to give up. I just gotta get it all I got this way. I'm tired. Shit. Shit. Okay. Dead one. Get close to pretty high mountain here, and you can see why I can't progress at night. You can see those crevices everywhere. Like right now, there's a line across here. I have to find a spot, like maybe here, where I can go through. So it's plus three right now. So I gotta keep moving quickly uh, before the rivers really melt down and I'll be in trouble. Fog is coming in. Oh, clouds, so I gotta keep moving. Made it to the top, I'm pretty excited. Now I'm going down the other river, I forgot the name, and uh, on my way down, 112 kilometers to uh, Omsushan from here. We're in a different valley here than uh, Shiokaya River, more like uh, pine trees. So, no more tundra, I think. It's beautiful. To show you what happens when I'm in a situation like here where there's a lot, a lot of deep snow. been progressing uh, and suddenly my skis are just layering up underneath because the temperature, the warmer temperature, with a lot of snow on with the skins underneath, uh, it feels like I'm walking in aisles in the middle of the tundra and uh, not that I have any experience in that and uh, so I finally realized, so wait a minute, I can just walk, it's hard pack enough, I have to be careful, it's like walking on a, on a like walking on a wire. If I get off a bit to the right or to the left, boom, I'm uh, down to my knees. Isn't it beautiful? This is, this is why I come here. Get me mesmerized when I walk to see those triangle uh, mountains.
This is a beautiful place, isn't it? It was worth a dance. Gotta go now. I've never been to a place like this. I've been to, I've never been to the land of hoes. Let's start over. So, I have never been to the land of hoes. Ah, forget that. Okay, so, welcome to the land of crooked trees. Check this out. I am not making this up. The camera is straight. Those are the trees. Check it out. Do you see what I see? I see crooked trees. And I'm not crazy. Those are crooked trees. Hoppa! So I got 8K to Kalimi, I hope. 725 according to my GPS. I'm gonna try to go in a straight line as much as I can. I was pretty excited. I thought I would make it pretty quick. Incidentally, I was following the trail, walking, you saw me. It starts snowing harder and the snowmobile trail completely disappeared. I can feel it, I can sense it on the ground, it's all soft everywhere. It would be nice to know where the trail goes because it could save me a lot of time. Very, very, very good news! I have found snowmobile track again. As you can see, I am definitely arriving in the town of Kalimi and I'm very very glad to arrive here. After this I'm going to have a road all the way to Omsucha, 22 kilometers away. So yes, I'm uh, taking off for uh, Omsucha, okay? My backpack, 26k, and I hope to be there tonight. April 26th, I arrived uh, at midnight last night from Galima in Omsuchen. I'm finished with the missing link, I'm very excited. This is the end of the road that goes all the way to West Africa. So again, I'm very excited to be here after 595 kilometers, 51 days. I'm done, no more sled, no more skis, no more snowshoe. Now I'm moving on to my bike. This is a new life for me. Passing from the missing link onto a bike, and to the first continuous road in over 5,000 kilometers will deliver Dimitri to the border of Mongolia. Dimitri moves faster into civilization and remnants of ancient cultures. First day of bicycle for Guna and I together on this expedition. We are ready, our bikes are ready. We are Ochin, get off. For the next 20k, we're gonna get a lot of trucks out of Omsukshan. After that, it should slow down. Dimitri's wife, Gulnera, was smart enough to avoid the minus 30 degree winters of Siberia and now joins him for the first 2100 kilometers of cycling. in the mud while being passed by a truck and I bent the derailleur. Right now there are only six speeds. Last time we stayed in Ozernoye in this ghost town. We had a lot of mud, a lot of snow yesterday and, and rain. So we went to find refuge. I wanted to put the tent inside the cabin. So we found a cabin that was somewhat clean and put our tent inside to protect a bit from the wind and the rain. Guna is trying to clean her bags for the 20,000 times from the mud, which means that we got to keep moving. Anything you want to say for anyone? Um, oh, I like to be here. Look at this beautiful nature. Truck going by, that's all. About uh, 14 days to go. Oh. 
Oh, it's ice underneath. Yes. Permafrost. Whoa, 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 whoa. This should be our last evening in the mountains. to find a way to go across the water without a ferry because doing a second navigation of the world uh, human power that requires no ferries. Dima, what's your kaif? What my what? Kaif, kaif. It's like what's the pleasure to do this? Why are you doing this? What's mm. I meet people, I meet Yakut, I meet Chakshi, I meet Iran, I meet Koryak, I meet uh, Ukraine, I meet life, I meet people. <laughs> Why did I stop one month? Well, it's very simple. My father passed away in France and uh, in a very tragic and sudden death. And uh, he actually... Uh, um, like if I was watching a fire reduce and, and progressively extinguish itself. So being a very strong and brave man, he decided to Extinguish himself before life extinguished him. So he decided to to finish it. And thank you for your for what you have taught me in life. Thank you for the courage you had, and for having always let me go and fly ever since I left home at nine, and then later on at seventeen. You've been an intriguing, interesting, and fun dad in beautiful times. I love you. It's gonna be a good time to, to clear up my head on this bloody, bloody next 1400 kilometer before I get to see Gunnar again. I need to spend the time alone and finally digest all what has happened the last month. It's not, it's not easy. I've been pushing hard the last few days. I'm going to be, be pushing very hard with you now to, tomorrow night. We're going to leave trees very soon. We're going to start going into a uh, uh, Mongolian steppe. So this is one of the last few days for me uh, in a long time in trees. about 50 kilometers from the border south and I'm gonna take you through this for about a month or more, I have no idea. It might be time to go biking because the sun is rising. Oh Champs-Elysees, oh Champs-Elysees. When you bicycle or walk, you can see it happening a lot more. This allows me to see the water at a natural pace where I actually can digest it. I'll process what I see as I, as I move forward. I don't want it. I think a great Mongolian meal, homemade in a, in a gear today, very nice. I just stopped by, just to see to take pictures and I was offered a meal. 
the cinematographer is Hildin Tokhtov, who is a man filming right now. Young Angol boy, Hildin Tokhtov. <laughs> But out here in Eastern Mongolia, there's not too many people living, but there are people uh, living f uh, that you can always see. They just live very, very squatted across. Very strong nomadic culture still. Right now they move the pool deal. Chucky, anyone? So what do we think? This or this? Yeah. Big dummy, indeed, now as a face. Check this. That's from the 7th century. If you look at those statues, it looks like they are in position like this. They are actually quite cold. And not surprising, we're in Mongolia, where the, the, the Gobi Desert, where the winters can be minus 40. So yes, it makes sense to be like this. Maybe soon enough, I will be like this too. The horse is all around my tent. <laughs> Again. So I can hear them communicating. I can hear them... I can hear them uh, munching. I can hear them eat. I've never seen so many horses. I think there's about 500 horses in this valley. I've read that there is 17 horses for every Mongol. I'm not surprised. Really. <laughs> Every time I camp the last few days, there are horses around my tent at night. Yes, <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> souvenir, Mongol souvenir. I, don't, I, I can't scare people all the way with uh, skills on my, on my bike. Obviously, it's not happening. So, bye bye. I was told I gotta listen. This is beautiful to be here. I've seen today about five motorcycles and three cars. How are you doing, buddy? Relax. Are you okay? Sun feels good. Nice nose ring. Mmm, this is good, huh? Are you going to Burning Man this year? Okay. Got some right. What? What? You want to tell me something? Very tribal look. I like it. I dig it. Sand dunes in Mongolia. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, this is beautiful. Uh, not too many kilometers today, only 40. But uh, but I get to be in sand dunes. How cool is that? In Karakurum, near the place that Genghis Khan chose to be the capital of the country, where they used to have uh, thousands of people living there. To say hello to all my friends, all beautiful horses that have been uh, had the privilege to be placed here. I want to be able to move forward 
towards West Mongolia. So my bike is repaired, all the repairs are done. Now that's that you. Rock on, Mongolia! Climbing in three sections. When you have too much weight, what you gotta do? This is my first location for my first antipode. I have reached the antipode in Western Mongolia. I am at the location north, 47 degrees, 53, 32, east, 106 degrees, 39, 78. The second one is in Chile, and I will reach this at a later date. 15 of October 2012 is 6 o'clock at night on the outskirts of Ulaanbaatar. I got there with my bike. Very excited about this. <coughs> so again, uh, here is the place. Uh, first antipod, and we're on to Chile now. He's crossed the Bering Strait navigated roadless Siberia, and reached his first antipod. But this is not the end for Dmitri. Currently, he cycles through Central Asia, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and onto the Middle East in 2014, towards Yemen, his gateway to Africa in 2015.